Well, we've got a little something something for those folks who like mobile apps, which means all of us. And for those people who use Google, which means all of us. You see, Google is upset with sites that spoil the mobile experience with pop-ups. And I know there's going to be a lot of people out there who resonate with this. Essentially, Google wants search results to favor sites that have the best information and the least annoying advertising that covers up that information. While the underlying content is present on the page and available to be indexed by Google, the blog post from Google on this topic says content may be visually obscured by an interstitial. This can frustrate users because they're unable to easily access the content that they were expecting when they tapped on the search result. Chibert, I want to throw this over to you. We've all had this experience where, yeah, pop-ups are annoying on the desktop or on a tablet when you've got a big screen. But on a teeny tiny screen where, where the ad can literally take up the entire space and, and because of poor design, the little close button might actually be off the screen and impossible to close without shutting down the window. Google is basically saying, look, you need to get smarter about your advertising, otherwise we have a net loss. Do you see this actually being a problem or is this just an annoyance? Oh, let's put it this way. If someone pops up an ad and I can't get to the controls or I can't, you know, get to the information I want, I stop. I just dump it and try something else. So to the advertisers that think this is really cool, no, you're actually losing um, business because people are getting really pissed off about this. And for God's sakes, test your stuff on a mobile device too. It's not hard. You know, Adobe's got some really cool tools. They need, you need to, you need to balance this. You don't go and slam an ad in someone's face and expect them to say, oh, great, I'm going to buy from you. No, it's going to turn them off and say, you're not worth my time. All right. Now, Lou, let, let me throw over to you a little bit because uh, of the three of us, you spend most of the most time in an actual enterprise environment. Uh, anytime there's a rollout of anything across an enterprise, it is thoroughly tested. And that means different platforms, that means different operating system, that means every t type of machine that you might have in an enterprise needs to experience uh, the patch, the rollout, the program before you certify it as enterprise ready. Does that start to need to happen to advertising? Because that seems, I mean, that doesn't seem like that's going to be something that they'll spend money on. Yeah, look, I mean, every every site seems to have a different kind of ad platform that they use. I think that, you know, um, you know, businesses that you pay for, like subscription-based services, they don't have any ads, they don't have anything to worry about. So they, they tend to not do pop-ups and other things to try to get away from that mobile experience. But I think sites that require ads, they have all their own different platforms. And I think this this type of thing is going to be tough even for Google to detect because, you know, based off of sites, most of their crawlers today will will pull down static web code, uh, HTML code, and they, you know, they'll, they'll analyze it that way. Now it sounds like they're actually physically rendering the page. And, you know, a lot of sites have tricky ways where they'll, they'll render the page and then you get to read the content for a second and then they start to show, you know, they execute JavaScript and the page updates and they start to actually see different things kind of float around and push your site down or up, That's which is even more annoying to pop up for pop-ups than, than that. Uh, for me. So I think, you know, it all depends on how web uh, Google's even doing this. If, you know, they could put restrictions on it, but then people are just going to get smarter and, and find out different ways to, to display the ads. So I think, I think to me, it's more of just an annoyance thing and they just need to have a standard of how they want things to, to be slight, to be displayed. Right. Uh, Google has, well, I think the only approach that they can really do, which is they're going to crawl pages. And when they crawl pages, they're going to be looking for those pop-ups. So they're probably going to be looking, they'll actually scan what kind of ads pop up when they call up that page by the crawler. If your site isn't mobile optimized, or if it does really bad things with pop-ups, your ranking just goes down. Uh, Chibert, <laughs> I don't see websites taking this lying down. They're, they're, there's going to be a lawsuit at some point, right? Because they're going to say, you can't do this. You can't dictate what advertising providers we use. Uh, do you see that being a tenable legal position? I don't know. That let's get the Twill guys in on this one. But you know, I'm sorry. You know, there are other search engines. You know, tough. I I don't like pop-ups. I don't you know I don't I don't mind it if you know there's a sidebar, and you know the sidebar that you know come up on different pages go wow that's really cool and you know because they're playing nice I'll go and click on it. But just like Specs and some of the other folks mentioned in the chat rooms, like, yeah, vote with your dollars. Um, so, yeah, maybe there's going to be a lawsuit. But my opinion, I don't think they got a leg to stand on, really. 
I like that idea of voting with your dollars, but at the same time, it's I think it's a tiny bit more complicated than that because uh, the pop-ups, they're not just pop-ups. Uh, Google is also going after the types of advertising that dynamically change the page. If you've ever been on a mobile device and you tried to click a link and suddenly the link moved as you made the click because another ad got served and it pushed the page down or up, that's <laughs> the little dirty secret. That's not a mistake. That's actually something that some designers will use to get you to accidentally click on an ad and get revenue that way. Uh, so in that sense, I, I'm sure there's going to be some of those who are running sites that are maybe not that big, maybe just need to fake a couple of clicks per day that uh, are going to say, fine, go ahead and rank us down. We're still going to get those mistaken clicks. We're still going to earn money. Is there a long-term solution? Is there, a, is there a way to convince, other than penalizing, these website creators and the content makers that it's in their best interest to make a responsive design that really only encourages people to click on an ad that they're actually interested in. Uh, Lou, what do you think? You know, I, I've been thinking about this for a while, actually. There is, there is actually a way. I mean, I've gone to sites where I've had these, you know, especially the shifting. I hate that, you know, especially when you're on a mobile site and the site kind of jumps. And sometimes that's a development problem where you're, you're dynamically injecting stuff and sometimes it's, an, it's unintentional. But, you know, there, there is a way to do it. And I think the way to do it is it's, it's user, it's crowdsourcing based. You know, a user goes to a site, they get ticked off based off an advertisement issue. They never want to go back to that site. So maybe they should tell Google about that, right? I think maybe that might be an option where they start to rank based off of two variants, one being the web crawling based uh, algorithms that they use and also being, you know, on clicks and so on, but also being based off of what users think. And maybe they can give you two different search results. One with, hey, the users think that this site sucks because of ads, and but we'll still give you these search results over here. Uh, that's that's that doesn't have that information in it. So I don't know. I mean, that that seems to be really the only option. I think without you know with, without trying to de go and automatically detect these types of things. You know, I, I love our audience because they're so tech savvy. We've got Dr. Morbius, Emily, Emily the Strange, Java, who are all all chiming in. They're saying, yeah, you know, this is an annoying problem. I run no script. I make sure Java is disabled. I turn off Flash. All those things that we do in order to try to keep ourselves safe. But, you know, Tibert, <laughs> there's a part of me saying, I shouldn't have to play this cat and mouse game, right? I mean, this, <laughs> just work with me. What, what would you suggest? If you're at a university, if you've got this next generation <coughs> of, of content and web developers at your fingertips and you've got their ears, what would you try to tell them to convince them that they need to design better? Well, I actually told some web developers recently that started adding in, you know, the hooks for pop-up ads. And I said, do that again, you're fired. <laughs> I won't stand for it. I hate it. <laughs> uh, I really love Emily the Strange's idea about, gee, maybe we should have a Rotten Tomatoes um, ranking for websites. So this is the whole maybe, the shaming. Maybe that, yeah. yeah, shame them. You know, you're Catholic. Shame works, right? Uh... No. <laughs> we tried. Uh, but, okay, how much of this is just us being grumpy old men saying get, get off our lawn? Is there, is there a case? I mean, think outside of our regular mindset here. Is there a case to just, to just say, this is the web. I'm sorry. This is how it's going to be. It's not going to change. This is the new economy. Just get used to it. Anyone? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think this is a point where you know the user base in most of these sites probably keep user trends and how much time they how many with the traffic trends that they get. And if they notice that they're trending down, they need to they need to pinpoint what the reason of that is. And most likely, it's probably because they have some annoying garbage on their screen, and users just don't want to go back to it. I mean, news stories today you can find it on ten different sites, and I usually pick the ones that are not less annoying. So I think you know. Again, I think it's just the web and users are going to work around it however they can work around it. Like these guys are saying, no scripts and so on, or just go to the sites they know are not going to tick them off. So I think, you know, it's we either accept it and move, move ahead or we try to find tools around it.